Good morning, and welcome to the webinar on skill-based hiring with the National Career Readiness Certificate. I'm Sean Lyons, Executive Director of the South Dakota Retailers Association. First, some information about our association. The South Dakota Retailers Association is a 3,900-member statewide association. Our primary mission is to represent retailers in the legislative and regulatory process. In addition, we provide information, offer training for food service and alcohol licensees, and provide member services. Those include credit card processing, workers' compensation insurance, business insurance, and data security. We also have an agreement with a labor law firm that allows our members to get answers to employment law questions from an attorney. Now I'd like to introduce you to Heather Nelson, who is presenting today's program. Heather is a Labor Program Specialist for the National Career Readiness Certificate Program with the South Dakota Department of Labor and Regulation. She has been with the department for one year and is responsible for overall program administration of the NCRC. Previously, Heather worked five and a half years for the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, where she provided employment services to job seekers and businesses. She also has held roles in human resources with the manufacturing industry. Heather received her bachelor's degree with an emphasis in psychology and human resource management from Minnesota State University in Mankato. A few things before we start the presentation. This webinar is being closed captioned. Following the webinar, a transcript will also be available. The phones of all attendees are muted so we won't be hearing background noises. During the webinar, Heather is going to give you examples of questions that appear on the NCRC test, and you'll have the opportunity to actually answer them on your computer screen. A calculator might come in handy for a couple of the questions, so if you have one nearby, you can use that. Don't worry about getting the answers wrong. The test questions are completely anonymous, and we'll know all we'll know is how many people selected each answer. You'll see how that works when we get, get to that part of the webinar. We'll have a question and answer period at the conclusion of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question at any time, just go to the panel on the side of your screen. You may need to click on the orange arrow to maximize the panel. Type your message in the chat box, then click on send. At the conclusion of the presentation, I'll read the questions out loud, and Heather will provide the answers. And now we'll turn the presentation over to Heather Nelson. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Sean, and thank you. My name is Heather Nelson, and I am a Labor Program Specialist with the South Dakota Department of Labor and Regulation. I want to thank you all for joining me today to discuss skill-based hiring with the National Career Readiness Certificate. There are four handouts available on the side of your screen under the materials section. The NCRC core assessment booklet, the NCRC flyer, NCRC letter of endorsement, and the PowerPoint presentation. Feel free to print any of these documents. Here are the topics that we will cover today. We have a lot to talk about in the next hour. Topics include overview of the National Career Readiness Certificate, also known as the NCRC sample work keys questions, advantages of hiring someone who has earned the NCRC, how to find people who have earned the National Career Readiness Certificate, how the NCRC can assist with employee screening, hiring, training, promotion, and retention, testimonials, NCRC letter of endorsement, and determine the NCRC skill level suggested for a specific position. Before we dive into the presentation, I want to emphasize that the NCRC is free for job seekers and free for you to prefer on your job postings and recognize in your overall hiring practices. First, let's talk about skill-based hiring. Skill-based hiring refers to the practice of employers setting specific skill or competency targets. Skills and competencies may be cognitive, such as mathematics or reading, which is what the NCRC measures and verifies. The NCRC can also indirectly measure other professional skills, often called soft skills, which we will cover further within the presentation. 
ask yourself, how do job applicants report their skills to you? How can you tell they know what they say they know? Often skill reporting is solely based on self-reporting by the job applicant. Now, we hope that they are accurately reporting their skill set, but sometimes there is a disconnect, which may be due in part to the fact applicants don't know exactly what skills they possess or what skills are needed to be successful on the job. Coming from an HR background myself, these questions were always difficult to answer. In a hiring role, I often asked myself, am I making the right hiring decision? The NCRC takes part of the guessing game away because applicant skills are verified by a proven assessment. To break it down a bit more, let's look at career readiness and foundational skills. Career readiness is defined as the level of foundational skills an individual needs for success in a career pathway or career cluster. Foundational skills are the fundamental, portable skills that are critical to training and workplace success. These skills are fundamental in that they serve as a basis the foundation for supporting more advanced skill development. And they are portable because rather than being job specific, they can be applied at some level across a wide variety of occupations. For example, both a plumber and a doctor use math. Both an administrative assistant and a chemist must be able to use tables to locate information. Individuals who develop these foundational skills are more likely to be successful in training and in the workforce and are more competitive in the job market. Examples of the foundational skills the NCRC measures are reading for information, applied mathematics, locating information, problem solving, and critical thinking. To sum it up, the National Career Readiness Certificate is a skill-based hiring tool that measures the foundational skills necessary for career readiness. Let's look a little closer at the evolution of the National Career Readiness Certificate. The NCRC is an industry-recognized, portable, evidence-based credential that verifies essential skills necessary for workplace success. This credential is used across all sectors of the economy and verifies the following cognitive skills. Problem solving, critical thinking, reading and using work-related text, applying information from workplace documents to solve problems, applying mathematical reasoning to work-related problems, setting up and performing work-related mathematical calculations, locating, synthesizing, and applying information presented graphically, and comparing, summarizing, and analyzing information presented in multiple related graphics. When we talk about the NCRC today, you can list it as a preferred or preferred credential or preferred qualification on your job posting. It is not something that can currently be required in South Dakota. Just consider the NCRC as another tool you can use to find a good fit and to make the best hiring decision. Best of all, the NCRC carries no cost to the employer to prefer on job posting. As I mentioned, the certificate is portable across state lines and is recognized by other NCRC states. For example, an individual can earn the NCRC in New Mexico and bring it to South Dakota knowing it will carry the same recognition. The scores on the individual assessments are universal, so a level four earned in math means a four in math, whether it was earned in South Dakota or New Mexico. As you can see, every state has participated in the National Career Readiness Certificate. This map measures the certificates earned per capita within each state. The darker red the state, the more NCRC activity within that state per capita. South Dakota is in the top 20th percentile. Let's take the time at this point to cover some background information as to how and why the NCRC was created so you can fully understand the program. First, how did the NCRC come to be? The NCRC was actually created in response to employer demand. In the mid-1990s, businesses approached ACT because of their reputation in creating the college entrance exam, typically taken by juniors in high school. And they said, hey, you obviously have been very successful in predicting college readiness. Would you be able to create an assessment measuring career readiness that would make the hiring process a bit easier? So ACT got to work, and they profiled thousands of jobs by talking directly with the person who performs the job. 20,000 at this point. They then identified the skills needed to be successful on the job and at what level they needed to be performed. 
three skill areas were found to be universal to over 90% of jobs, and the National Career Readiness Certificate is based on those skills. Applied Mathematics, Reading for Information, and Locating Information. Individuals can earn a certificate at a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum level. Certificate level is determined by the lowest score in any of the three assessments, which is why it is crucial to recognize each individual assessment score. When we look at the assessments in varying levels in the subsequent slides, a 3 equals a bronze level, a 4 is a silver level, 5 is a gold level, and 6 and 7 are platinum levels. Let's take a look now at these three assessments that make up the NCRC. The first assessment is applied mathematics. At some point, many of us sat in math class and asked ourselves, when am I ever going to use this? We may not have believed it then, but the answer in a variety of positions is every day. The applied mathematics assessment measures critical thinking, mathematical reasoning, and problem-solving techniques for situations that actually occur in today's workplace. While individuals may use a calculator and a formula sheet to help with the problems on the assessment, math skills are still needed to set up and solve the problem. There are five levels of difficulty, increasing in complexity from level 3 to level 7. The levels build upon each other, each incorporating the skills assessed at the previous levels. There are 33 questions, and individuals have up to 55 minutes to complete this assessment. Testers may use a calculator and a formula sheet, both of which correlate to real-world work expectations. To understand the NCRC and how it involves skill-based hiring applicable to the workplace, we are going to experience the assessments by answering some sample questions. You will have about 30 seconds to answer each question, and we will take a survey of the results. Your answers will be anonymous. No one will know how you answered. We will take a look at a level 3 question and a level 4 question in mathematics. Here is a level 3 mathematics question. Remember, you can use a calculator. Please start working on the answers as I read the question out loud. In your job as a cashier, a customer gives you a $20 bill to pay for a can of coffee that costs $3.84. How much change should you give back? The choices are A, $15.26, B, $16.16, C, $16.26, D, $16.84, or E, $17.16. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out what your answer is. Do you have your answer? As you can see, the assessment question is on the screen, and we're going to ask that you choose your answer. Remember, this is anonymous. No one knows how you are answering the question. I see some answers coming in. We're going to give you just a couple more seconds to answer the question. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close that poll now. So let's go ahead and look at the results. So, 98% of people think it is B, and 3% of people think it is C. And the correct answer to this question is B, $16.16. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Now take a look at a level 4 mathematics question. Remember, you can use a calculator. Please start working on the answer as I read the question out loud. Over the last five days, you made the following number of sales calls, 8, 7, 9, 5, and 7. On average, how many calls did you make each day? The choices are A, 5.8, B, 7, C, 7.2, D, 9, or E, 36. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out your answer before we put the assessment question on the screen and let you answer. Now, 
Now we're going to put the assessment question on the screen and ask you to choose your answer. All right, I see some answers coming in. We'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer the question. Okay, we're going to close that poll now. So let's take a look at the results. As you can see, 8% of people think it is A, and 92% of people think it is C. And the correct answer to this question is C, 7.2. Let's move on to the next slide. The second assessment is locating information. Workplace graphics come in a variety of formats, but all communicate a level of information. From charts to graphs, diagrams to floor plans, Identifying what information is being presented and understanding how to use it are critical to success. The Locating Information Assessment measures the skills people need to locate, synthesize, and use information from workplace graphics. There are four levels of difficulty in this assessment, increasing in complexity from level three to level six. Like the math assessment, the levels build upon each other, each incorporating the skills assessed at the previous levels. There are 38 questions on the assessment, and individuals have up to 55 minutes to complete it. Let's take a look at a level three and a level four question. Here's a level three locating information question. Please start working on the answer as I read it out loud. Make sure to reference the image on the left. According to the gauge shown, what is the current pressure in PSI? The choices are A, 30, B, 35, C, 40, D, 45, E, 100. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out your answer before we put the assessment question on the screen and let you answer it. Now we're going to put the assessment question on the screen and ask you to choose your answer. see some answers coming in, we'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer the question. Okay, we're going to close that poll now. Let's take a look at the results. As you can see, 6% of people think it is A, and 94% of people think it is B. And the correct answer to this question is B, 35. Let's move on to the next question. Now take a look at a level four locating information question. As you can see, the graphics are becoming more complex. Please start working on the answer as I read it out loud and reference the image on the right. You must sort clothes in a dry cleaning establishment according to the customer's instructions. According to the form shown, how should the customer's shirt be treated? A, dry clean it, add light starch and fold it. B, dry clean it, Add light starch and place it on a hanger. C, launder it with no starch and place it on a hanger. D, launder it with light starch and place it on a hanger. Or E, launder it with medium starch and fold it. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out your answer before we put the assessment question on the screen and let you answer it. Now we're going to put the assessment question on the screen and ask you to choose your answer. I see some answers coming in. We'll just give you a couple more seconds to answer the question. Okay, we're going to close that poll now. Let's take a look at the results. All right, a little bit more of a mix here on this question. We have 3% of people who think it's A, 15% of people who think it's B, 79% of people think it's D, and 3% of people think it is E. And the correct answer to this question is D. The shirt is to be laundered with light starch and placed on a hanger. Let's move on to the next slide. 
The last assessment necessary to earn a certificate is reading for information. Not only is it important for employees to read for information to do their jobs, but it is also important that they can read and understand the company's employee handbooks and policy communications. The Reading for Information Assessment measures the skills people use when they read and use written text such as memos, letters, directions, signs, notices, bulletins, policies, and regulations on the job. There are five levels of difficulty. Level three is the least complex, and level seven is the most complex. There are 33 questions, and individuals have up to 55 minutes to complete this assessment. Let's take a look at a level three and a level four question. Here's a level three reading for information question. Please read the procedure on the left as I read the question out loud. You are a cashier. According to the notice shown, what should you write on a store employee's receipt? The choices are A, the employee's identification number, B, the employee's department number, C, the amount of sales tax, D, the 20% discount price, E, your initials. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out your answer before we put the assessment question on the screen and let you answer it. Do you know what your answer is? Now we're going to put the assessment question on the screen and ask you to choose your answer. We'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer the question. Okay, we're going to close that poll now. Let's take a look at the results. So based on the results, we have 3% of people who think it is C, 3% who think it is C, and 94% of people who think it is E. And the correct answer to this question is E, your initials. All right, let's move on to the final question. Now let's look, take a look at a level four reading for information question. Please read the instructions to the left as I read the question out loud. According to the instructions shown, what is the condition for project success other than delivery on time? The choices are A, all rods must be sorted by both length and diameter. B, rods 11 meters long must be leaned against the overhead door. C, the customer does not want rods that are warped. D, the 5 meter long rods must go in bin 2. E, the 10 meter long rods must arrive at the customer in bin 4. We'll give you about 15 seconds to look at this and figure out your answer before we put the assessment question on the screen and let you answer it. Now we're going to put the assessment question on the screen and ask you to choose your answer. We'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer the question. All right, let's go ahead and close that poll. Let's take a look, a look at the results here. So we have 50% of people who think it is A, 18% of people who think it is C, 21% of people who think it is D, and 11% of people who think it is E. And the correct answer to this question is C. The customer does not want rods that are warped. So as you can see from these samples, samples among the three assessments, all questions are based off real-world situations people experience on the job. There are higher levels that we did not look at today for time's sake, specifically level five, six, and seven. But I would invite you to look at the handout attached to this webinar called NCRC Core Assessments Booklet that will give you all of the levels for each skill area. Doing this will show you the jump in the degree of difficulty, especially between the level four and five questions. Now, what happens if an individual takes all three assessments and does not score at a level necessary for success on the job? We have a tool to help people gain success in obtaining the desired NCRC level, a curriculum called KeyTrain. 
In fact, we encourage all job seekers to work in Keytrain before attempting the NCRC. So what is Keytrain? Keytrain is essentially the study guide for work keys. There is a course in Keytrain with lessons tailored for each work keys assessment. This program allows for remediation to improve individuals' career skills, which benefits the employee and employer because skills are improved before starting at a company and attempting the NCRC. Pre-tests help place the individual in the appropriate level, and practice problems are similar to those on an actual work keys assessment. Post-tests help measure gain. The bottom line is that an individual can increase their foundational skills simply by working in Keytrain. Many people appreciate the math portion in Keytrain. Once again, many of us sat in class and wondered, when am I ever going to use this? And later realized that math is used in, every, almost, in almost every job. Keytrain provides a refresher so individuals are ready for the NCRC and ready to tackle work-related problems on the job. What else can the NCRC measure? Although the NCRC does not directly measure soft skills, it can be an indirect measure. If people take the time to obtain the NCRC, which is a three-hour time commitment at the least, it gives a good indication into their motivation and commitment level. Many of these individuals are also committing several hours to key train in preparing for the NCRC. This soft skills indicator alone would spark my attention as an HR professional. Almost all NCRC assessments are done online. This can give you an indication that an individual has basic computer literacy. For example, they can use a mouse, key requested information, and navigate an internet-based system to complete the NCRC. So how does an individual obtain the NCRC? The process is easy. The NCRC is free to job seekers when they are registered with the Department of Labor and Regulation. First, the job seeker visits their local DLR office. Second, DLR staff set up a Keytrain account so the job seeker can practice and improve their skills before the assessment day. Improving these skills will in turn be advantageous to the employee and employer on the job. Third, job seekers must take three assessments necessary for certification, locating information, applied mathematics, and reading for information. They must score a minimum of a three on each assessment in order to earn a certificate. Finally, the individual then lists the NCRC credential and assessment scores on job applications and resumes, and this is recognized by businesses. Employers who want to hire people who have earned the NCRC should contact your local Department of Labor and Regulation office to have the NCRC added as a preferred credential on your job posting. This is what the certificate looks like. Each certificate is signed by DLR's Cabinet Secretary, Marsha Haltman. This certificate happens to be mine. Each individual who earns a certificate will have a certificate number listed on the front. Job seekers may present businesses with this actual certificate or provide you with a certificate number on the application or resume. If the certificate number is the only information supplied on the application, businesses are able to verify the job seeker has the stated credential by visiting nationalcrewreadiness.org, which is the website listed on the top of the screen, by simply entering the provided registered certificate number. This will allow you to verify they have the certificate, but will not give you the different skill assessment levels. This is something you can ask the applicant to provide you. Let's click on the website so I can show you how to look up a certificate. This is the official NCRC website. Feel free to explore it to learn even more about this credential. When you get to the website, what you want to do is scroll all the way down towards the bottom of the screen. And you want to click on Verify Certificate. When you do that, you're able to enter the certificate ID. So I'm going to do that right now. And all you have to do is hit Submit and it pulls up the verification of the certificate. As you can see, the certificate holder's name is going to be towards the bottom, so you can see my name right there. And then you can see that this is actually verified that I do possess a gold certificate uh, on the NCRC. Beyond showing the actual certificate, an individual has other ways to share that information with the potential employer. Job seekers can provide a URL link on the resume or application. 
employers click on the link to see the applicant's score results. Job seekers can print their NCRC transcript to present to employers. The transcript provides in a hard copy the same information as the electronic link. Job seekers can present the hard copy of their NCRC certificate, which includes certificate number employers can verify. Now let's take a look at what the transcript looks like. Remember, this can be viewed in paper format or online through the link. So if you click on that link, it brings us right to the NCRC transcript. As you can see, I have taken the NCRC assessment. And this is the official transcript from ACT. You will find the name of the individual at the bottom of the screen under test taker information. So you can see my name there. You can also see the scores in all three individual assessments. As you can see, I scored a 6 in applied math, which is the first one listed, a 5 in locating information, which is the second one listed, and a 7 in reading for information, which is the third listed. When reviewing this information, I want to emphasize it is important for employers to look at the scores in each skill area versus the overall NCRC certificate level only. Remember that the overall certificate level is based on the lowest score earned. So I, like most people, have higher individual scores. I have two platinum, one in applied mathematics and one in reading for information, than what the certificate level suggests, which is gold. Your goal is to hone in on specific skill areas suggested for the occupation you are recruiting for. These are the current NCRC numbers in South Dakota and on the national level. As you can see, with 15,504 certificates earned in South Dakota and over 3.5 million certificates earned nationwide, this is a credential that is being heavily used across the U.S. We are proud to say that in South Dakota, we have a qualified workforce that is scoring better than the national average. We are leading in platinum at 0.54% compared to 0.5% nationally. Gold, 27.03% compared to 20.77% nationally. And silver, 58.61% compared to 55.74% nationally. Who are these people in South Dakota who are taking the NCRC? In South Dakota, assessments are free to any job seeker who is registered with our office. Until a couple of years ago, the numbers came from job seekers. Recently, many high school students within South Dakota have earned a certificate. We are approaching our fifth year of offering the NCRC in high school statewide. The other NCRC program specialists and I administer the assessments on site in the high schools. As you can see, the number of high schools and students participating in the NCRC is increasing. We have grown from assessing 31 schools during the first year of the program in 2012 to assessing 107 schools last year, assessing a total of 3,665 students. We are predicting that the number of schools and students being assessed will increase this coming school year. Last year, 94.4% of students who attempted the NCRC earned a certificate. These students are proving their foundational work readiness skills as they exit high school and enter the workforce immediately or after they attend post-secondary education. Some of the South Dakota technical schools are also utilizing the NCRC. I want to emphasize how important it is for you to be educated on how to use this as a hiring tool. With so many people earning the NCRC nationwide and in South Dakota, you will see the credential listed on an increasingly more job applications and resumes. So how can all of the people coming to you with a career readiness certificate benefit you as an employer? We often hear the unemployment rate in our community is 2%. I just need a warm body. DLR understands that and we want to emphasize preferring the NCRC can assist in the overall hiring process. Don't consider it a means to screen out applicants. Rather, consider it another tool, just as you may prefer X amount of years experience, a two-year degree, proficiency in Microsoft Office, etc. In regards to screening and hiring, the NCRC gives you a solid insight into foundational employability skills. Instead of solely relying on applicant self-reporting, you now have a way to verify these skills and interview those applicants you know have the skills necessary to succeed on the job. The NCRC reliably measures core employability skills to ensure you hire only the most 
qualified, trainable candidate. Most importantly, the NCRC helps you find the right fit based on the scores earned on the varying assessments. If you have someone with a level three in locating information, you probably don't want them reading the most intricate blueprints. Can they eventually be taught to read the blueprints? Sure. In the meantime, can they be successful in another area in your company? Definitely. Which leads to the next point of training and promotion. In regards to training and promotion, you will decrease training time and cost by hiring people who have verified their skills and have the foundational basis for training. You will then be able to target your training budget for job-specific skill training rather than basic foundational employability skills. You can also use the possession of the NCRC as a plus or preferred factor to help you make promotion decisions. One South Dakota company had three employees apply for a promotion, and earning a silver level certificate was one piece of the evaluation criteria. In regard to retention, the NCRC will help in reducing employee turnover by ensuring employees have the basic skills necessary to be effective on the job and make a good match the first time. It takes a certain level of motivation to complete the NCRC, which can be an insight into the applicant's seriousness and commitment to staying on the job. Nationally, there are over 14,000 employers who recognize the NCRC. To view a complete list of businesses who prefer the NCRC on a national level and read testimonials, visit workreadycommunities.org, which is listed on the top of this slide. ECT did a return on value calculation for a company called Widgets R Us. The goal was to see if there really was a benefit in recognizing the NCRC. You can take a look through the chart while I highlight a couple of things. As you can see from the chart, there is evidence that the NCRC helped in retention. Before the recognition of the NCRC, there were five employees who left per a 90-day period, and after the recognition of the NCRC, only one employee who left per a 90-day period. You can see that the cost to train a new hire decreased, the actual total products made per hour increased, and the products wasted per hour also decreased. Let's take a look at what employers here in South Dakota are saying about the NCRC. One business said, the NCRC is a good tool for the application process in determining who is qualified or who has the all-around skills necessary for the job. Another company said, we will prefer the NCRC on job postings. We are looking for more commitment from applicants and think this may help. And finally, we will accept the NCRC in lieu of a high school diploma or GED. One of our South Dakota employers who currently prefers the NCRC wanted to share a testimonial to express their opinion of the program. Shelley Baumgart, who works in human resources and accounting at River Cities Public Transit in Pierre, said this program is a great way to see what talents potential employees have that would benefit our company. When asked if she would recommend the NCRC to others, she responded, the NCRC is a great tool for recruiting quality employees. Go ahead and read the quote from Governor Dugard. Governor Dugard has taken the NCRC himself and is encouraging businesses to recognize this as a valuable hiring tool. The governor recognizes the NCRC is an excellent complement to other academic achievements and experience, but he is also suggesting businesses recognize the NCRC in lieu of formal education and academic certifications, especially during workforce shortages, because people may still have the right skills to work. The NCRC can indicate when that is the case. If you are interested in reading the full article by Governor Dugard, you can visit DLR's NCRC webpage where you will find a link to the full article. Several employers across the state list the NCRC as a preferred qualification or preferred credential. We currently have 64 letters of endorsement from employers who are recognizing the NCRC. These employers consider the NCRC as another tool they can use to find an employee that is a good fit for a position and to help make the best hiring decision. Preferring the NCRC on job postings comes at no cost to the employer. 
To get started with preferring the NCRC on your job postings to find the right applicants, we ask that you complete a letter of endorsement. Signing a letter of endorsement is not a contract. It bears absolutely no commitment for the employer. It simply means you know what the NCRC is, will recognize it when you see it, and or will list it on your job posting. It is a way for us to track who is recognizing the NCRC. Having a list of employers who use the NCRC is a great way for us to market the NCRC to our job seekers and other businesses. Ideally, when you're completing the letter of endorsement, we encourage you to check boxes number one, number two, and number three. If you check box number one, it means you will simply ask applicants, do you have the NCRC? If you check box number two, it means you will prefer the NCRC on job postings for one or more positions in your organization. If you check box number three, it means you allow and give permission to NCRC advocates to use your name in the promotion of the NCRC. And we will feature your business name on our DLR website, which will increase your online business presence and draw more job seekers to recognize your business as a potential place to apply. Showing your support for the NCRC will also encourage job seekers to skill up and improve their skills, proving they are ready to work and have the skills necessary to do so, thus providing you better applicant pools. We are now going to take a look at our current South Dakota employer support list. All of these employers have completed a letter of endorsement and checkbox number three, giving us permission to use their name in the promotion of the NCRC. All you have to do is complete a letter of endorsement and your name will be added to our website. When you get to the listed website, you want to scroll down to the employer support section. As you can see, employers are organized on our webpage by county. Let's take a quick look at the businesses that are recognizing the NCRC in their hiring practices. You can print the letter of endorsement directly from this site. It's located right here. However, based on your registration for the webinar, you will see the letter of endorsement in the materials section. Please complete it and email it directly to me. My contact information is listed on the bottom of the form. You can also submit the letter of endorsement to your local Department of Labor and Regulation office. The next question you might have is, how will the NCRC look listed on my job posting? This is the verbiage you will use. You will indicate that the National Career Readiness Certificate is preferred. Next, you will list the desired level for each skill area. Once again, this is something your local Department of Labor office will help you with. Remember, the NCRC is to be used as the preferred qualification in your hiring process and is another tool in helping you identify the best fit for your company. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I figure out what levels I should prefer on my job posting? The answer is, you have full access to the Job Profiles database. You can see the website listed on the top of the slide, which is profiles.keytrain.com. ACT has profiled over 20,000 jobs by specific skill level in all three assessments and have come up with the average skill needed to make it easy to find the occupation you're recruiting for. You can use this website to determine suggested skill level areas. However, this is something your local Department of Labor and Regulation office would be more than happy to assist you with when you post a job. You may prefer and list the level for each skill area, including applied mathematics, reading for information, and locating information. Now we're going to take a look at the Job Profiles database. So we can explore a couple different occupations and their varying skill levels. Let's say you're recruiting for an administrative assistant job. Call your local Department of Labor office and they can assist you in determining the skill level. When the website is pulled up, just search for administrative assistant. And two results come up and you want to pick the one that most closely relates to the position you're recruiting for. I'm going to go ahead and pick the second option here. And when it pulls up, it's going to give you the skill level results. And what you want to do is look under the median skill level here. So for this particular job, you would want to prefer a level three, 
in Applied Mathematics, a Level 4 in Reading for Information, and a Level 4 in Locating Information. Let's try another one. Let's say you are recruiting for an assembler slash fabricator position. So go ahead and do that search. Pick the one that most closely relates to the job you're recruiting for. So we'll pick the last one here. And when we pull it up, once again, you want to look under the median skill level here. So for this particular job, on your job posting, you would prefer a 3 in applied mathematics, a 3 in reading for information, and a 3 in locating information. All right, we're going to do one more. So let's say you are recruiting for a buyer position in a retail environment. I want to go ahead and do that search in the job title bar up there. Click search, and then pick the one that most closely relates to what you're recruiting for. I'm going to go with the second one because we're looking for a retail buyer. Go ahead and click on that. Once again, when it pops up, you want to look at the median skill level, which is right here and look under the corresponding columns. So applied math, you would prefer a 5. Reading for information, you would prefer a 4. And locating information, you would prefer a 5. Remember, this is something our DLR representatives can look up for you and post on your job postings in our South Dakota Works job bank. All right. Next up, besides the job profiles database, we have another tool free of cost to employers to determine preferred skill level. The job profiles database is sufficient. However, it is a suggested average based on the 20,000 jobs profiled by ACT. If you want to get more specific skill area levels based on your unique individual company, the WorkEase estimators can do that for you. The WorkEase estimator helps businesses more accurately determine the skill level for jobs specific to their company. In addition to using the Job Profiles database, companies select subject matter experts. These are the people who are currently performing the job being evaluated within the organization to more accurately determine skill level. They do this by referring to the Job Profiles database, comparing the job company's job description, and filling out estimator forms. This is something that I can personally help your business do. If you are interested in having some of your current workforce assessed to create a baseline, you can reach out to me and we can talk about that option as well. Use of the WorkEase Estimator option is a time commitment for a company, anticipate about two to three hours, but it can more accurately determine skill level specific to your company. If your company is interested in this option, please contact me directly. One question I typically get most often is, do I have to prefer the NCRC on all of my job postings? The answer is no. It is your decision to pick the job postings you want to include the NCRC preference. Some employers recognize the NCRC on all postings, while others pick and choose. For those of you who are experiencing a workforce shortage, you may want to consider accepting the NCRC in lieu of a high school diploma or GED to open up your applicant pool. According to 2014 labor market statistics for people 25 years and older, there are over 50,000 people in South Dakota who lack a high school diploma or GED. Even though job seekers may lack a high school diploma or GED credential, many still have the necessary skills to perform a job well. And since the NCRC is meant to measure workplace skills, it only makes sense that this would be an appropriate indicator. The NCRC is not, however, a replacement for a high school diploma or GED. We at DLR still encourage job seekers to earn their diploma or GED, but sometimes individuals need a job immediately. And after they get that job, they can still pursue obtaining their GED. Let the NCRC serve as the first rung on that ladder. Secondly, if you have a position that gets extra attention in many applications, the NCRC is a great way to screen applications and make your process more lean and reliable. When you re if you receive 50 plus applications for one job, it is nice to know that those who have the NCRC may already be a match to the skills that you desire. Here's a map of our current DLR office locations. 
We have 16 offices statewide to help with the NCRC and to assist with, with other great business services. Please don't hesitate to reach out to them. And finally, here are the local dealer contact numbers. I'll give you just a little bit of time to look through these. Please determine the office nearest you and give them a call to submit the letter of endorsement to get the NCRC as a preferred qualification on your job posting. I want to thank you for taking time to learn about the National Career Readiness Certificate and how it can help you, you hire the right person for the job. You can feel free to reach out to me if you need any further clarification on what we have discussed today or if anyone wants to actually take the NCRC to get a better understanding of the benefits it can offer your business, I can assist you with that as well. We will now take some questions, so please type your questions into the chat box if you have not already done so. Very good, Heather. Thank you for an excellent presentation. We'll go ahead and get started with those questions, and as Heather indicated, to ask a question, go to the panel on the side of your screen and you may need to click on the orange arrow to maximize your panel. Type your message in the chat box and then click on send. Heather, let's go ahead and start off with a few questions. The first question was, sorry I missed part of the webinar. How much did you say it costs for people to take the NCRC assessment, and how much does it cost employers? It is, it is free for job seekers to take the NCRC as long as they're registered with uh, the office, our office, South Dakota Department of Labor and Regulation, and is absolutely free for employers to prefer on job postings and recognize in the overall hiring process. And we do have empl uh, employment representatives here at DLR that can assist you with, you know, getting that listed on job postings. Next question, when people take the NCRC assessment, do they have a certain amount of time to take the test? Is it in paper form, or do they answer the questions online? The NCRC is predominantly taken um, online, and there is a time cap for each assessment. So each assessment, individuals have up to 55 minutes per assessment to take the assessment. Now, they don't have to use that full amount of time, but they are allowed 55 minutes per assessment. Mm -hmm. Heather, can you explain the difference between platinum, gold, silver, and bronze? And can you have a platinum level on one type of skill and a bronze level on something else? For instance, could have a platinum rating on reading comprehension and a bronze for math, or are all the scores averaged out? Right, so the certificate level is based off the lowest score earned in any three assessments. So that's why it's really important to uh, take note of each individual assessment versus the overall certificate level. So for example, for myself, when I took the NCRC, I scored a platinum level in math and a platinum level in reading and I scored a gold level in locating information. So technically, my certificate level was a gold certificate. However, um, you know, people do deserve that recognition of earning those platinum levels or higher levels, whatever it may be, in the varying assessments. Heather, can I have my current employees take the NCRC so I can get a, an idea? Who has what skills so I can move people into jobs that they might be better suited for? Absolutely. And, and that is definitely something. My contact information is on the screen here. Uh, and you can reach out to me by phone or email, and we can definitely have that conversation. Uh, it's sometimes nice to know, you know, creating a baseline of, of what your current workforce is and really making sure that individuals are in the right job. Uh, so that, you know, that serves uh, as a success for the actual employee and employer so that the good match is made. Could I get a copy of the businesses in South Dakota or the website address to access those businesses? Um, absolutely. Um, I think you're going to get a, um, I can actually probably go back to, to the slide, otherwise you will get this 
presentation, um, and I think Donna will send it out to everybody that um, participated or it's in the materials list there, so you can see that website listed. But the easiest way really is to go ahead and Google uh, NCRC DLR South Dakota. And that'll get you right to that website there. And then you'll just go to the employer support section and you'll see the list of current employers preferring the NCRC. Heather, how do job seekers obtain the URL to put on their resume? Sure. When they uh, take the NCRC and they get their certificate, uh, essentially, they are connected with an online account to manage their certificate. Um, and so what they do from that is they can manage the certificate, make their scores public, they can go ahead and print out their transcript, and that's actually where they'll copy and paste the URL from. So it's called a My Work Keys account that the job applicant gets to be able to communicate the information to employers. For a seeker to take the NCRC, do they set up an appointment at any DLR center, or are the tests given every day? Yep, so what they would do is they'd go ahead and give us a call or come into the office and meet with one of our employment representatives here. And usually what they'll do is they'll connect them with a key train account to practice before. Uh, and then what they'll do is they'll just schedule a time with them when they feel comfortable and ready to take that assessment. They'll schedule a, you know, some blocks of time. Some individuals will take all three assessments in one day, and others, like myself, faced it out. So I took one on a Tuesday, then the next day on the Wednesday, took the second one, and then finished up on a Thursday with my final one. So it's very flexible in, in scheduling the NCRC assessments. Is there a relationship between grades in school and scores on the NCRC? Um, you know, they haven't, I guess they don't really like to compare, um, not really comparing apples to apples, essentially, um, because it measures two different types of things. So, you know, if people are, you know, earning certain grades and, you know, predicting college readiness, um, the NCRC measures career readiness. So it's, it's measuring two different types of things, but sometimes there can be a small correlation between the two. How long is the NCRC good for? So do um, people it, read? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I'm just trying to read the, I think the rest of the question. I think how long is the NCRC good for and do people retake? Or so do people retake those tests? Mm -hmm. The NCRC is um, really good uh, forever. It doesn't have an expiration date on it. Um, however, you know, if someone takes it and 10 years down the road, um, you know, after they've perhaps gone to college and they say, you know, I'd really like to retake it because I've really gained some more skills, uh, or perhaps the skill level that was suggested for my job I didn't initially reach, we would allow for a retake if the occupational um, goal was not met. And I don't see any further questions at this point. Heather, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, you know, I just want to thank you for joining me today uh, and listening to the NCRC. And I really hope that you found that it could be another uh, hiring tool to use in your process. Uh, I think it's something that, you know, maybe we haven't um, seen before or heard of, but it's a really great way to verify that employees have the right skills to be hired in your company. And most importantly, it's so important to make sure that you're hiring the individuals with the right skills and placing them in the right position, um, you know, or decreasing retention and so forth. So there's a lot of advantages. And I just want to reiterate again, if you have any questions about this presentation today, my contact information is still up on the screen. Feel free absolutely to reach me by phone or email. And thank you for your time. And Heather, I should note real quickly that one of our attendees said the Huron phone number is incorrect on the PowerPoint and should be 353-7155. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Then I would also note 
for everyone who registered for the webinar, you will receive a link to the PowerPoint presentation later today, along with a link to the recording of the webinar. And we will also be happy to furnish a transcript of the webinar if requested. Again, we want to extend our thanks to Heather Nelson for today's presentation. And before we conclude, I'd like to mention our upcoming workshops. In September, SCRA will sponsor our labor management conferences. Those will be held in Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. At those workshops, labor law attorney Chris Hoyme of Jackson Lewis Law Firm will focus on key employment law issues, including the new federal overtime regulations, workers' compensation issues, discrimination issues, and other current labor issues. We'll also have a business panel that will talk about the Project Skills Program that links up South Dakota employers with high school students who have disabilities at no cost to the employer. Check out our website at www.sdra.org for further information. When we send you a link to the recording of today's webinar, we'll also include a link to our website and the labor conference information. Heather, again, thank you so very much for your time today and an excellent presentation. Thank we you. want to thank Ed thank you. We want to thank everyone for participating in today's program. We hope you have a great day.